handy right now. No. Oh. See you later. <laughs> Ciao for now.
Welcome, Dharma students. Working? Good. Okay. So I'm, I'm delighted to have our teacher and friend, Kenshin Rupeshi, here to teach on Guru Yoga, specifically six session Guru Yoga texts, which we are already doing or have done for a long time. But uh, I wanted people to have actually, you know, practice teaching and understand how it is to relate with the Vajra Master and the Lama. So M.J. has uh, delightfully granted my request, and we um, are here today. It's very auspicious. So we, we now are following Nevada County rules. So uh, if you'd like, you, it's not necessary to wear a mask. Um, if you want to, then that's fine too. Uh, we could turn on the circulation in the back there. We have a, no one's turned that on that $500. <laughs> <laughs> we, we can have that turned on. Thank you, Turuko. So uh, we, we're taking a break uh, at one o'clock for a potluck lunch and we'll zoom at uh, two o'clock and then uh, end around four and we'll, uh, we'll have a kata offering line at that point. So. I'd also like to uh, welcome my own friend Zering here. Uh, and a, a wonderful uh, presence to have with us, filmmaker and translator and interpreter. Thank you so much for being here. Um, so, uh, please uh, pay attention and enjoy yourselves too, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Do you, do you want to start with any prayers or what you like? I'm going to go to Zoom. with the Ravish stanza. Respectfully, I prostrate my body to each other. I present God to every type of offering, actual and irrational. And thus, all my negative actions accumulated since the beginning of this time. I rejoice in the virtuous actions of all ordinary and noble beings. Please observe that the beings of God turn to the will of God and close to our heavens. With the merit of the people, I sought in others, and that you do what you do to get right them. And may I take good of it for the sake of all sentient beings. This offering and make of precious to one and the virtues we have collected throughout the three times with our eyes to each mind. Oh, my master, is laid down to the three precious jewels. I offer all to you on the great, 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 according to the end of the world, 
We can skip the house okay. today. Yeah. 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 Thank you. To do this, Yes. So because of nick of time, so we will skip. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone, good morning. Good morning. Nice to see you again. So greetings to all of you. So as you know, like today's topic is about a succession guru yoga. So Lamala, I'm just asking like a since like this guru yoga teaching it has the tradition it has the lineage tradition of both the transmission and the explanation so what would you prefer both or both or not mm. ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、
ตัวเช่นไปอันนี้ขอสกุลลําเจริญบัตรนั้นเลยอ่ะนี่จงกูอยู่เรื่องที่นานนี่จังอันนี้อ่าสังหารกิจเต็มบ้างสังหารกิจ
I must utilize, I must not waste such a precious human body opportunities that presented right in front of me and to cultivating such a uh, acknowledging a preciousness within oneself and the sense of urgency to develop our spiritual practice. Mm. Uh, で、ケチンボシュレベスね、ケチンボレス、デンデンケチンボレス。いないよ、あに、あ、たんじで、どんばちゅうしんどそんわでれや。あ、ね、ばまんにわち、となまでわち。え、しんだ、あ、で、カ
in Juju, the Nijo Lamig one shooter, and change your simple tombatam, Margaret Tomba Sugar. But the gay Kangalia comes this way among Buyerwa, so die and the Tanya Sugar and Sinche. Pamara Jumbo to the Tombalea, Kenayori, then she gave you the Malay Kenayori, that Gelong and a Timmy Janga Timmy Janga Jew, Marsumini Jiori, then a change your simple Tombaleon do a Dodum Chopje. Bombushipchirichipchirichipchirichipchirichipchirichipchirichipchirichipchirichipchirichipchirichipchirichipchirichipchirichipchirichipchirichipchirichipchirichipchirichipchirichipchirichipchirichipchirichipchirichipchirich
as if my own life. Uh, so one must have a degree of conviction within us that the, how important it is to uphold the vows, the promise that we made. Mm. So, in the many uh, Tantra texts, it mentioned that one who observes the upholding the vow with the purity in a pure sense, then that person or that practitioner, even though that practitioner has not done a, a, a serious meditation and practice about generation stage and the completion stage. However, because of observing the vow purely, therefore that person achieved the enlightenment within seven or 16 lifetimes. I mean, so that is uh, uh, such a, that's a uh, reward of uh, ob observing uh, Samaya. That also um, actually is stated by the Buddha himself. Mm. So it actually there is a Buddha stated that like a, like a, uh, in the gist, Buddha stated that uh, like a one who observes the pure morality, like a, a Samaya, even though that practitioner like didn't do all the meditation about the um, the, the complex uh, practice, such as uh, generation stage and the completion stage, however, will receive the attainment in 16 lifetimes. Mm -hmm. Um so now like a, uh, so as we mentioned earlier like a, there are three types of vows right even the very first vow if you just look at the first vow first vow is uh, individual liberation vows so that within individual liberation vows, there's a two classes, layman's vows and the monastic vows. So whatever you took the vow from either layman's or the monastic vow, so whatever vow that one observe and doing our doing best to guard this with its pure sense, with the purity, try to like a, not to incur uh, damage to the vows and even so even we incurred uh, 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 downfalls even we made mistakes so like right even we made mistake so it's important to uh, do the purification practice to uh, refresh that vows by doing so like if if, if one did this uh, throughout the life then just along this practice, like individual liberation vows, then, then that person will realize the, uh, realize the uh, nature of truth during the, uh, the uh, coming uh, Buddha, which is the Maitreya Buddha, the fifth Buddha. So during a fifth Buddha has already made a promise that during a Shakyamuni's time of during a Shakyamuni's, uh, during the teaching period of Shakyamuni Buddha, who, whoever the practitioner even uphold the one vows, right? 
So he will like a cause to realize the truth of the natures. So that's that's how powerful it is. Mm-hmm. So now, like if, if let's say one have taking those three, all the vows, three types of the vows, individual liberation vow, Buddhist vow, and Tantra vows. And since we are practitioner, we are learning, and it's, it's a way vulnerable that we make mistakes, right? So what 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 can I do, like in such uh, circumstances? So it is very important that when we make mistake, it's important to acknowledge that that was a mistake, and we must reinforce to purify that mistake in accordance with the uh, in accordance with the corresponding. Uh, practice, uh, for example, so if you, if we make a mistake in terms of the Buddhasattva vow, then do the correction corresponds with the Buddhasattva practice. There's a specific practice that relates to how one can uh, do the purifications and also goes with the Tantra and the individual liberation vow. So since we are learning, it's it's we we make mistakes, but it's important to acknowledge and to correct through the purification practice in accordance with the corresponding rituals. Mm-hmm. だ、と、だ、で、ルマが あ、<音><音><音><音> And the uh and so now speaking of vows, uh, so the um, since there are three types of the vows in the general presentations, uh, therefore nature of the vow is very different. Those three vows 
house uh, by its nature default setting is a different how different it is for example if we speaking of individual liberation vows just let's focus on the individual liberation vows uh, for the individual liberation vows in, in terms of the uh, like a, in general speaking individual liberation vow is comments on the body and speech individual liberation vow is a bind towards our body and the speech therefore as long as the practitioner reframes from the, that act from the body and speech it's good enough to uphold it All right yeah uh, that individual liberation vow is not bind towards the mind rather it was a bind towards your body and speech therefore as long as you refrain from such action, that's good enough to upholding that vow. But some cases, like at some exceptional is some, some vows one needs to reinforce to cultivating my mindfulness uh, to, to, in order to refrain, refrain from such actions. So important to reinforce the mindfulness and cultivating introspective mind and so forth otherwise broadly speaking for the individual liberation vow to how to uphold how to uphold purely do not commit just to refrain from such heinous actions as the mentioned right now now so now now let's move to the uh, uh, let's move to the uh, tantra vows how different it is and Tantra vow is very different from the individual liberation vow. In what sense? Uh, for examples, Tantra vow is not only it instruct us to refrain, rather to engage. For examples, uh, taking uh, uh, taking refuge vows. So taking refuge vow, it taking refuge vow it comes with the package of reciting three times a day three times a daytime three times a night times so if if one doesn't recite three times night time or not all three times three times a daytime and three times night time if one didn't recite so it means one break the vow because you didn't recite so it means your not only it's not good enough to refrain from negative action, rather you need to engage into the actions. And another one is to, uh, uh, for one, one vow, tantra vow, is to engage in the four, four types of the giving. So one needs to engage into those actions. So if one didn't do it, so one breaks the vows. Now, if we look at the third type, so there's a difference, right, by nature of the vows. So then, like when we look at the Bodhisattva vow, so Bodhisattva vow, so like a, uh, like I mentioned earlier, there are um, 18 root vows and the uh, 46 secondary vows. So, so those vows, like a, literally, it says to to we need to recite six times a day so it's not like a you count for example so, so, so i'm sorry so it's there's an 18 root vow so it's not to count the 18 in the word it says a count but it's not uh, we cannot take literally like count count 18 one two three it's not good enough rather to reflect on the nature of the each vow corresponding to our actions in a day or night so we, before we go to bed reflect reflect rewind your day like how 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 are how i did today so then that corresponds with the reflecting to those vows and if we we have to be sincere to ourselves that if i break this vow through reflecting or this uh, during daytime i didn't my action didn't match with this vow then it's important to accept oh this is the made the mistake because 
Mao says this, but my action didn't, didn't it's like it, it contradicts. So therefore, it's important to then purify in accordance with the Bodhisattva's rituals, so how to amend your actions. By doing so, you are like upholding purely. So each those other, I mean, so like a, First understanding, and then since we are we are learning, even we make mistakes, it's important to purify accordance with the corresponding rituals. Okay. Mm ตะโกเลยอันนี้ตันตะตุดุลามินินจุดีอันตะงะตุมาเชเกตุดุลามินลามินินจุดีอันนี้ชอบตุดุจินาโลเลยอันนี้เตเลยอันนี้อ่าอ
pitch instruction on how one can do the generation stage and the completion stage, very advanced teachings, right? Yes, they have all those features. However, what it lacks in those teaching is seemingly looks like a foundation, the commitments, but as Lamazangwa mentioned, if you miss the upholding the commitments, it doesn't matter how much you know about the actual how to do the the things, but commit upholding the commitment is the nuts and bolts of your spiritual foundations. It's very important. Therefore, this teaching makes even it carries more weight and more preciousness uh, compared to those uh, uh, like a like uh, golden teachings. Okay. Mm -hmm. ตอนนั้นตัวตัวตัวเตงเนี่ยว่าจุเนี่ยดีอันนี้กูดาวดิเชียวนะตาอ่ามีชีวิตตัวว่าจุเนี่ยกูเนี่ยสันนี่พามี
we are very vulnerable to commit uh, negative actions. So now this is a sense as a human, as like a sort of like we have our default setting is we have a lot of like afflictions, defilements, uh, delusions within us. So that's the, how we are, right? And, and to God, since we, since to God ourselves, we need to consider it to someone's interests. We need to be more conscientious towards our actions. Otherwise, we are very vulnerable to we are very vulnerable to commit a negative actions, right? So to do this, first we need to educate ourselves. What are those? And therefore, then we need to guard ourselves with the more conscientiousness and more considerate, considerate. And in this way, you are protecting your those three avenues that we are most likely to commit uh, negative actions. Mm. Somebody you know, the other is on law. Kind of like a third one is uh, be prepared before, how to say, delusions arise. So try to stop that the, the defilements arising before it arises. So when we arise, those uh, the uh, defilements, then we will break many uh, those samayas. Does it make sense? <laughs> yeah. So yes. therefore, it's a pre preventive. It's preventive yeah, yeah. measure is very important, yeah, yeah. right? So you can prevent before it arises. When it arises, since we have lots of full of, <laughs> it's very difficult to stop, mm -hmm. right? Don't make a hard break. So rather yeah. just like. That's why that the tundo lamene jo the kitchen boy but then the rest that kind of tundo lamene jo choga the one time any six sambo can do. So with this, again, we're trying to underscore the message of how important it is like a succession guru yoga and therefore to uphold all the, the pledges that we have made how we can uphold those pledges. It's really this succession Guru Yoga residing three times in a day and three times in a night with the mindfulness, right? So by doing so, it really encompass protecting most of the pledges that we have so far we have made. So therefore, it's really important. Mm -hmm. So the text that we are uh, relying here today, it's like this six session Guru Yoga, as the author is the His Eminence, the Gaja Pamonga Rinpoche, who compiled this text. Yes. So the root text, like it's like a uh, it's uh, uh, composed by Benjamin uh, Losan Chuyeng. Uh, uh, Losan Chuyeng. Chuyeng. Losan Chuyeng. Yeah, one of the uh, previous uh, Benjamin Lama spent Benjamin Losan Chuyeng. So he uh, he wrote uh, many many different uh, texts, uh, rituals, and shadanas. He's uh, one of the most how to call most color yes, so here so we consider his like a, his very uh uh kind in that sense yeah out of out, out of the, those many many books different books uh, tests yes. and uh, rituals and chadana so he uh, wrote that this uh, succession guru yoga and then later on the uh, uh the Pabonga Rinpoche's combine or arrange, and he added some 
versus that uh, and the then you should go and the Ganji to wait to go. Ganji to the Benjamin Sanchi Sunjotan and Mabata. And you should go over the Liam, no check, dealing with Eddie, and Benjamin Sanchi Jingi, Jason Nanjoti, Chogi Mushikon, never check, or get you down the name, but they have a Pongar Mushiga name. So his eminence, the Pongar Mushi, like even though there's a root text, like a they before this one, actually, there is the uh, Guru, Guru, succession Guru Yoga, which is like a first composed by uh, Benjamin Lawson Chuike. But what he was, what his eminence, the Kyabjapa did was to compile all the essence and add on some additional materials in that, for example, like eight verses of the praise is the add on, and later there's uh, at the end conclusion. The uh, dedications also are like a freshly add on. So, so he, in a way, which is he is the author in a sense. He compiled and add on some ex, ex, additional lines. Mm. So, um, like, uh, roughly speaking, like in this, the whole uh, six, six, six session Guru Yoga text week breaks into two parts. Beginning part is the Guru Yoga, Guru Yoga of practice. And the, then at the second part, first part is Guru Yoga part. Second part is the uh, uh, enumerating the vows, three different types of vows. Mm -hmm. So the first part, like the Guru Yoga part, again, it has like a then preliminary part and the actual Guru Yoga part. Uh, so, so everything is written quite clearly uh, in the text, right? So. So I will recite from the uh, beginnings. Please look at the text. Ninjo Juri Inji, one to one Namji Pedi, Sejo to Tabe, Damba Samo Namji Jang, Chadam Jundu Neva, Tundu Gulam Namji Neva Jangu Days, Tadangi Deshado Tes Shutaiba, Tadini Chora Kasura, Mushima said, Naman Guru Manjo Gokayas, Tadi Pivanaleta, Lamajambe and Chatalos for it. So, like, uh, the, the, so if you look at the page seven, so, um, so very the first paragraph, small paragraph, it's just as we mentioned earlier, golden teaching of Tibet, right? That part we have all, uh, explained. Now, then, uh, followed by the uh, Sanskrit, uh, uh, it's a uh, paying homage to the uh, Guru, yeah, Guru Manju Goshayas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Namo so, means paying homage and Guru is a, a Guru teacher. Manjushri, uh, Manju Koshaya is a Manjushri, so I pay homage to my Guru Manjushri. That's his. Uh, ชุมตะเนี่ยดิงาดูเอ่อผู้จุนาดิชุมตะเนี่ยเดล่าทอมาแล้วอันนี้ชอบจอบตะตําบะทําจอกูเยอะตะดิทําบุชโลกะทําบ
So the next it read as I will explain an excellent method for purifying the vows and commitment in accordance with the tantras and the teachings of the venerable guru. So this is a, it's, it's the uh, again it's a pledge to compose the text. Uh, it's a pledge to compose text. So he will compose the text in accordance with the tantra uh, teachings that shows the purity of his te lineage of the teaching and to double down I will compose this text in accordance with my guru's uh, oral transmissions uh, not just guru's oral transmission it has the uh, it has the authenticity from the tantric text so and I'm why I'm composing this text as we mentioned earlier, how important it is to uphold the vows with the pure sense, right? So therefore, because of such an importance of this action, this practice, I will do my best to compose this text with the purity in accordance with the Maguru's oral transmission and the tantric text, okay? Mm -hmm. So again, so the, the big, <laughs> in lack of time, right? In lack of time, we might not able to finish the whole text. So as we mentioned earlier, this uh, this text has a we, uh, briefly, like and roughly in a sense, we can break this down, this text down into two parts. First is the Guru Yoga part, and second one is the enumeration of the vow. So let's hope that we finish at least finish the first part. Okay. Wadanche uh, so now, like, uh, so partly, like Rambach is doing, as you mentioned at the very beginning, it was Rambach is doing this oral transmission and the explanation. So whatever Rambach is saying, it's important we listen. So this is part of the oral transmissions with the explanations. Okay. So now, like, uh, any individuals, I will uh, read. <laughs> Any individuals who has received an initiation into a great mandala belonging to one of the two higher classes of Tantra and who continues to possess the Tantric vow in the continuum must review the root and branches commitment and vows daily. In particular, they must keep the commitment of the five families of six sessions 
if this is not done, one incurs the fault. If this is not done, one incurs the faults of an uns unspeakable infractions, right? So uh, this again, we, we, we mentioned earlier uh, uh, in our, our talks, right? So we covered that part. So what it says here is like a, to make it more clear, like a, uh, in, in Tantra, in Tantra vows, uh, particularly the Tantra vows. So Tantra vows are presented into like a um, Tantra vows and generic, uh, general uh, Tantra vows in, coden, in accordance with the five family Buddha and a specific vow corresponding to each of the five family Buddhas. For examples, like, like a, when we speak of five family Buddhas, first, like, a, let's say, Buddha Varajana is the first of the five family Buddha. Then there's a, like a five family Buddha, uh, five family Buddha vow common to all five family Buddhas, right? And the specific to the each of the five family Buddha, for example, Buddha Varajana Buddha, then there's a specific vows in relating to the Buddha Var Varajana and so forth, corresponding to all the vows. So therefore we need to observe all of those vows. And so one of those corresponding vows, like a reciting, uh, reciting, uh, for example, like a refuge stanza three times a day and three times a night. Uh, this is the one of the vow. Uh, so therefore, like it's really, so before we go to the bed, reflect your day. If I didn't do this one, then just develop a little sense of healthy remorse that, oh, I missed that today. And then uh, just, do the purification, right? And just then develop commitment that uh, today I miss it, but tomorrow I will I will try my best not to miss that. And and on the other hand, you, you, before you go to bed, you you did all your vows correctly. Then rejoice yourself, feel happy, feel just congratulate yourself that I did good day today, and rejoice. That also it's important. Okay, so that's the whole part. Just as what I've read here. อ่าผมบอกอยู่ที่ตําแหน่งนี้แล้วตําแหน่งนี้ตรงนี้เรื่องนี้มาขนาดมาตัวผมบอกอยู่เชื่อตรงไปเจอแล้วแต่นะฉ
So like a uh, like a uh, cult uh, like cultivating like a uh, uh, like a, this ten is uh, ten ten part means to rely to rely. So to rely upon the guru, right? We rely on the guru for the guidance of spiritual practice. So relying in itself is one of the uh, commitment. And then second, reliance on the spiritual uh, spiritual object, such as the bell and the vajra. So those are the part of the samaya where we rely on those objects to assess. Then we rely on those spiritual tools to, to assess our spiritual enhancements so relying right then we rely on the uh, uh rely on the uh, uh nourishment right nourishment in terms of the food right no so, so here nourishment of the eating so it's just like eating right so so there are certain like a uh, certain uh certain rules like a what like a what to eat during day what not to eat night and so on and so forth so and so forth. So did here, like a. So, what's your So, like a, or for example, in a tantra, it says like a relying on the uh, five uh, five nectars, inner uh, inner nectars, like a, uh, inner offerings. Relying on the inner offerings. So, inner offering refers to the five nectars, right? So, so those like a. Uh, so here it says the. Uh, so. To know more depth into those, one must uh, read further on the Lama Zongaba's commentary, commentary on the root downfalls uh, and his commentary on the 50 verses of the Guru devotion. Uh, so those texts that mentioned here for our own further knowledge to read more, if you want to know more depth, uh, but here the author says I will not go detail on those. That's your part of the homework. And now like, <laughs> the reason why he's composing this is to to guide the beginners how to uphold the commitment purely. Okay. Mm. So now like uh the so the the guru, uh, sixth century guru yoga starts with the very first step is to taking refuge mm. and generating awakening mind. Yes. 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 So one of the general presentation here, it says that like, a, so refuge is taking refuge is to leading us on the healthy path of the spiritual journey. And that is the entering gate towards being a Buddhist. So if you don't take this one, then you're not Buddhist at all, right? Taking refuge is the gateway towards the Buddhist, right? Being Buddhist. So this is the uh, very important part. Right, and then uh, uh, gener generating the awakening mind uh, is that mind makes us a greater a greater practitioner because we are opening our heart and mind infinitely. Right to to we embrace all sentient beings. When we say all sentient beings, we are really opening our heart infinitely that makes us a great a great practitioners or greater practitioner compared to who cannot who cannot open such a space of heart to include all beings right so that's not like, okay oh that then yeah uh yes so now when we recite this, taking refuge, is it is very important for us to visualize the merit field. Like when we do the, yeah. 
So, so we need to visualize the matter object or a refuge object, right? When we take the refuge, it's important to visualize the refuge refuge object. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So in the space above you, the visualization is in the space above you. In front of you. Yeah, in the space in front of you, then visualize a very majestic and vast throne seat supported by the eight lines on the uh, uh, signature, yeah, signature, signature yeah. Okay. Okay. eight fierce lines at the each directions, okay? Cho, cho okay. Really so, like a, so each direction there's a two fierce lines, so which made uh, like a uh, eight lines. Let's say. So like the, the, the sea that we are going to visualize is a very vast, it's not a tiny sea. <laughs> mm -hmm. Later we are going to, uh, we have additional visualizations on that sea. So right, just do your best to expand that uh, seed, okay? It's kind of like a foundation. And top of that, uh, we have to, uh, uh, we have to imagine uh, five different thrones. So middle uh, uh, throne for uh, Buddha Shakyamuni, uh, Chogutu Nambaji. So now, so we, we so only... So we told you that there is a teacher who is teaching you, and there is a teacher who is teaching you, and there is a teacher who is teaching you, and there is a teacher Oh, so now we have this foundation, right? Uh, the big, huge uh, seed supported two fierce lines at each direction. And then on top of that seed, in the center of that seed, there's another seed. On that seed, uh, uh, Buddha Shagyamuni, who is in the emanation form of a Buddha. So uh, in our visualization, he is the principal refuge object, okay? Yes. So now on that the middle in the center of this uh, vast seat here we have Buddha Shakyamuni, right? And to his right, there's another seed. Uh, in that seed, uh, like a throne, like a throne, let's say a throne. Not, not, not seed like, like this, okay? <laughs> like <laughs> throne, a throne, okay? Like a, a throne, a majestic throne, okay? On that majestic throne sits by um, Maitreya. Maitreya, along with the old lineage master of extensive deeds, they generally we call like their two lineage, extensive deeds and profound view deeds, okay? So on the right of the Buddha Shakyamuni, there's a majestic throne. On that throne, uh, uh, Maitreya, along with all the lineage of extensive deeds masters, right? <laughs> Like it, so like a, uh, the, uh, so here, uh, Master Asanga and uh, his uh, uh, disciples. Okay, so all the lineage master Asanga and all the lineage master of uh, extensive deeds. 
to the left of a Buddha Shakyamuni, there's another majestic throne. On that throne sits by Manjushri and Manjushri and all the profound view lineage master, including Nagarjuna and so forth. So all those are encircled by, uh, encircled to the Manjushri. On the back of the Buddha, uh, Buddha, there's another majestic throne. On that throne, all the blessing lineage uh, masters. Doji Chang, uh, Doji, Doji Chang. Say, on the back, on that chat, like a Buddha Vajadara, along with all the blessing lineage uh, uh, gurus. In front of the Buddha, uh, Buddha Shakyamuni, there's another majestic throne. On that throne, your root guru, your root, how many root gurus you have in this life, visualize all of them in that uh, throne. Mm -hmm. So this is called like a five families of the, yeah, the gurus. Yes. So like this, like a, so uh, in terms of now, how, how should I visualize my gurus, like the, the teachers that I met in this life? So how, how should I arrange, let's say, if you have many? So now there's one way of saying is, for example, if you are practicing, for example, Lamrim meditation, then visualize the teacher from whom you receive the Lamrim teaching. Or like, for example, if you are like a, you know, meditate or something tantric deities right so whoever you receive from that te teaching you can do this him is a principal and then all others are in cycle to him that's one that's this is a choice or uh some people like it's not comfortable to do this visualization then uh if you if you have if one has a many teacher so how should I arrange is whoever makes the biggest contribution for your spiritual growth, whoever is most important and kind to you in terms of journey in your spiritual, this spiritual journey, then make him or her as your uh, principal uh, figure in, in, in that category. And the remaining gurus are the answer go to him or to her, okay? Mm -hmm. So now in terms of the visualization, it's a, a terms of means like a market style visualization it means you, you visualize everything in here, right? That's the one way. And the second one is a Tojik means you visualize one guru on top of stack one guru on top of the each so depending on your inclination and mental disposition whichever fits most suitable to yourself you can choose okay okay. Yes. Yes. So now, the, however you visualize, right, the most important thing is, however you visualize one or the many, like, or, or the, like a display manner or the state one on top, right, however you visualize, the most important thing is just when you visualize, visualize as if the real presence of Buddha, right? The real presence, the, the, the real presence of Buddha is there. 
when you visual, yeah, even your guru, the real present, his or her real present is there, not just like a, you are visualizing on an image or a statue, rather develop from your heart the warmth of the real presence and the strength of the inner connection must be there. So like uh, on that actual throne, there are like uh, there are three three stakes of cushions, three layers of cushions. So uh, like a the first is a lotus cushion, lotus cushion. Then we can say moon cushion and the sun cushion. Okay. Yeah, the three and because it has all those has a symbolic meaning and then it's important to visualize. Mm -hmm. So, like I so the, 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 the foundation, the, the seat of the throne, right? So, on like the base is like a, it's supported two lines at the four directions. And on that big throne, here is the first cushion is the lotus cushion, right? So the outer petal is like a, a little like a, uh, in this like a uh, inner like intact and uh, like a full blossom flower. And the, uh, the innermost of the petal, right? So there is then is a uh, moon cushion, white cushions. And then, then the last question is the uh, golden slide red is the uh, it's a uh, sun cushion. So when like imagine that when you look at this, all those three cushions are visible, not just like a one hides another, rather all are visible. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure that what he translate. When you look at the uh, married fill, you can see the side of pebble, side of the moon cushions, and side of the uh, sun cushions. So it's not that each other cover or how to call cover. You know, so it's not height one another, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The lotus cushion is a little bit bigger than moon cushions, and the moon cushion is a little bit bigger than sun cushions. Yeah, so that you can see, right, be visible, mm -hmm. huh? But this in just turn the ah, you know, shumi gita, lama inata, idam inata, kare nadi, sumju kumbani ba, sumju yores. Ne pema deke julu chun, dawa deke yose chun, nima deke ani sumju sumju yores. Um, okay, so. So one interpretation of this one symbolic meaning or interpretation in terms of the what it symbolizes those three questions, right? It's one is in, in accordance with the Tantra explanation. Uh, the petals uh, symbolize the uh, petals symbolize the illusory body. Yes, uh, the lotus symbolize the illusory body, and then the. Uh, Moon cushion is symbolized uh, uh, the clay light, and the, uh, uh, the sun symbolized the unification states of the both illusory and the clay light. So it, it symbolized that whoever sits on that uh, cushion is the uh, embodiment of the uh, you know, Vajatara himself or herself, mm -hmm. that yeah, right, unified state. And then further that Buddha encycles by the uh, meditational deity of the four tantras. Mm. 
let's say. Oh. So this, the, the, like a four classes, four classes of Tantra, the, it's the man, the, the sitting arrangement, it has, <laughs> there's a sitting arrangement, it corresponds to the class of Tantra. Yeah. So the innermost cycle is the Anuyoga Tantra, Dedi's Anuyoga Tantra. No. So in uh, Anuyoga Ani Tantra refers to here, like a example, some of you like here, uh, Yamantaka, uh, Chakra Sambhava, and uh, uh, Guyu Samaja and so forth. Okay, so just, uh, uh, that's the innermost cycle. And the next cycle is uh, Yoga Tantra. And then the, uh, the third cycle is the performing Tantra. And the last one is the action Tantra or Kriya Tantra. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, then after that cycles, right? After the fourth class of Tantra, then the uh, Buddhas, 1000 Buddha of this eon, fortunate eon. So, like, so 1000 Buddha, yeah, yeah uh, uh, like 1000 Buddha along with the other Buddhas too, I like, guess. Yes, <laughs> And then on the on the Buddha's like uh, encircled by the uh, eight inner disciples, the eight inner Buddhasattva disciples. So uh, the eight inner Buddha along with the eight inner Buddhasattva and the rest of the Buddhasattvas, right? And the Jela and then like after that then this uh, uh the practitioners of the uh, the realized practitioners of the hearers solitary realizers then they uh dagas of the heroes heroine dagas dagini and the dharma palace mm. So every being in that merit field of visualizations, all are, are super mundane beings, mm. not the mundane being. So now, I mean, like, uh, right now, it seemingly looks quite complicated, elaborated, right? So maybe it's less, less, less elaborated uh, visualizations, right? I mean, if you do, like, you can make it. Uh, now, there's a reason why I need to do elaborate at this point, because at the, uh, the, the rest of the teaching, the rest of the, uh, the text, yeah, uh, in the rest of the text, right? It follows the, uh, then once you visualize all this elaborated, then you take refuge, taking refuge and generating the mind of the Buddha and uh, cultivating, uh, cultivating the uh, aspirational Buddhajita and then developing the engaging uh, Buddhajita, right? Uh, and then doing so, you're taking uh, blessings of the Buddha's aspirational and the engaging from the from the all those it says like a, the Buddhas and Buddhasattvas and all and all those beings. I'm going to take a blessings. Therefore, it's very important for us to I mean do our, do our best to visualize as elaborate as you can at this point, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, 
So, like uh, ideally speaking, like uh, you, you should uh, do your best to visualize all those elaborate uh, visualizations. So, if not, then five, five families of the refuge, right? Then again, it is too, too, too much. <laughs> then at least Buddha, along with the, the representing masters from the age of the five family, again that is a too much. Then Buddha, <laughs> Buddha, to his right, uh, uh, to his Buddha, to his right, uh, uh, Maitreya, and to his <coughs> To his left, uh, Manjushri, okay, Buddha, and so, so I mean, just then, 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 then you just believe that all other Bodhisattvas are encycled, right? Uh, because this is important. Because like uh, later, when it comes with the engage uh, taking the engaging uh, uh, Bodhisattva vows, so engaging Bodhisattva vow must be done through the. Uh, 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 from the uh, Buddhas and the Bodhisattvas. So it says plural, Bodhisattvas. So at least it's like a, you need to visualize Buddha and the Bodhisattvas. So two is plural. <laughs> <laughs> You need the colors in a jigba the yeche need this. So now, okay, so this is part is the visualizations. Now, so so first since it begins with the taking refuge, right? The taking refuge. So it is really important for us not just reciting the lines of the refuge, rather to evoke the cause of taking refuge. The so cause of the taking refuge. And the cause of the taking refuge are there are two causes to really generate the refuge. Uh, those two causes are first one is the healthy fear and the confidence or the faith. Mm. So, uh, healthy fear refers to like the first one is la like since we all like a, since like a, none of us wants a problem or suffering right that's 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 a fact right and therefore what if if it falls to the low migrations there are lots of problems so since we do not want a problems right therefore we just oh if i fall to low migrations there's lots of problems so i don't want to get in there therefore just that's a healthy fear to consider it right that's a and that's a first degree the lowest one then the middle is it's again it's like a samsara it's a it's it's a, samsara in itself it's up lots of sufferings samsara right samsara that's i mean no one can deny that samsara is a, a full of 
sufferings. So since we don't want to suffering again, right? So like, I'm just, what if I'm really trapped in this vicious cycle of right? Uh, it's it's not a pleasant. So like, it's like a, then cultivating a, a, a awareness really like just I don't want to be trapped there, right? This is like a, uh, generating the sense of like emancipating from that. So this is again a, a second degree of healthy fear. Third one, third one is uh, the reason why we are not enlightened is because the true obscurations blocked us, the true obscurations bind us in this unenlightened state. As a result, this, uh, we face lots of problems, right? Uh, so in terms of the obscuration, so it's like a de delusional obscuration and the, uh, uh, wisdom obscurations, right? So you feel that the tightness of those two uh, obscurations that bind us. So wanting to break that too, right? So the fear that really, like, it, I don't want to be like a too tied up by those two obscurations, rather to break free from those two two obscurations so that I can be awakened to achieve the enlightenment, Buddhahood, so that I can be, I can utilize the best out of me for all sentient beings. So this is like a developing a third degree of, of healthy fear. So this fear must be there. Okay. Since we are doing the, the uh, how to say, a great vehicle refuge, so we must have a Fear of the last one, both obscurations. Fear of both obscuration. Then it is easy to do that. That is why when when the I mean, Sanjay did that when the boy che, Chow did that when the che, I mean, Jin Jin did, I mean, Chow did with that door there, I mean, easy be easy, I mean, then we should go. So this is a fear. Is the first part of the right. Second one is the faith or the confidence. So we must have a confidence that the Buddha, as the, uh, as a guide who guide us to a spiritual uh, practice, a Dharma as a true protector who protect us, all right, and Sangha as the companion, companion or community who works along us on the spiritual journeys. So confidence on those three layers, okay? Mm -hmm. So like so with this two sense of like a causes for taking uh, uh, uh with this two sense of like a cause, causes for uh, taking a refuge, one must recite this. So here it's a, it's a uh, English, the order is a different, but so here it says, I take refuge until I, until I am enlightened, right? So until I enlighten, it didn't say, I take refuge until I achieve samsara or the higher migration, right? It didn't say that. So it says like, until I enlighten. So until we enlighten, we take refuge, okay? So then just it says, says clearly about Buddha, Dhamma, and the Supreme Assembly. No, so I will not read the lines, okay? Then you need the same jet, right? Yes, sir. Same jet, same jet, the 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 same jet, Dollar so 
So no, the, actually, this stanza is a uh, uh, this stanza. It 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 has uh, two meanings, right? First is uh, generating as uh, taking refuge. Second meaning is two remaining line is for generating the awakening mind of a Buddha, uh, or in other words, generating the altruistic mind, altruistic mind. So how it here explained here is uh, by the merit of generosity and so forth. So so forth means so other positive deeds, right? Uh, may I become a Buddha in accordance to benefit all living beings, right? So now for this, we have to understand that like a, like a, we are achieving Buddhahood, not just for other people's benefit. You are achieving Buddhahood for your own sake too. So this is important. So we call it like a, a dual purpose, dual purpose. So dual is the two, right? So first is, if you achieve Buddhahood for your for our own interest, for my own interest, right? And the second purpose is to I achieve Buddhahood for the well-being of others too. So it's 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 a both, okay, win-win, okay. So this is important, like we call dumbanyi. Dumbanyi means like the two dual purpose. Achieving for oneself and for others. Aspirations, right? Aspiration, two aspiration. Yeah. Aspiration for others and aspiration toward the enlightenment. So it's a aspiration, I don't know. It's a mental factor. In Tibetan word Dumba is the mental factor. So this particular Buddhi, uh, general Buddhist mind has a two different uh, insp how to say part of inspiration factor two two different yeah one is how to say so like it's just like we first you you want i want to achieve enlightenment if you achieve enlightenment basically it's you, you will end your suffering and the reason that's the first goal okay your aspiration i want to end achieve enlightenment <laughs> So first, it's like a, a first aspiration is to as first aspiration is to wanting to achieve Buddhahood, right? So so so, and then the second aspiration is to to benefit others. The whole once you achieve enlightenment, what you need to do is to benefit the others. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm not sure what uh, what he said. Order to benefit others, I will achieve enlightenment. So that's the two. What what do you call aspiration? Aspirations, uh, the the factors. So one, uh, how to say? One is One is uh, one is toward the others' uh, benefit. One is toward the uh, uh, enlighten. ตาเดเนเบเดชะดิเดชิมะเจตากันตะจําโดสมเจเนเอ่อมาดุเบคอนเลยอันนี้รังเกทะโกเลยอันนี้อ่าเสดีพามะกุเตเบสมเจทัม
uh, just following following you. You are just there repeating what you are saying. Mm -hmm. So like a, in both not just physically present, but they are also emotionally attached to that supplication request. Mm -hmm. So this is very important, okay? This is visualization. So with this, we need to recite three times. So since since we are reciting three times, uh, three times, right? So that fulfills the one of the commitment corresponding to the Buddha Varajana, one of the five family Buddhas. So when we in that particular like a vows, uh, it, it's it's there's a commitment to recite taking refuge to the Buddha Dhamma and Sangha. So by reciting the refuge line three times, that uh, that how to say that fulfills our uh, pledge. Mm -hmm. Let's say, and also like I just uh, when we're taking a refuge, there's a uh, taking refuge. It has a, like a uh, uh, again like advice that advice uh, like a, it's part of commitment. Also taking refuge, it's uh, like a uh, there's a uh, common common and uncommon uh, 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 the vows like uh, Ad, the, advice uh, like advice? precept like all the uh, yeah so so it's a it's a let's roughly say like it just it's it's a part of a commitment uh, so one of it uh, it says that one needs to recite three times a day and three times a night so if you so that also covered if you do the succession grow over six yeah. mm -hmm. And then after the uh, after this one, the next stanza is for um, meditating on the four immeasurables. So uh, and in the text general presentation of four immeasurable in terms of the in the text so uh, economity immeasurable economity presented at last uh, when we recite right but in the practice in a day, daily practice we should begin the immeasurable for imme uh, imme immeasurable of economity first okay that's something that Tenny so if you look at the A2, like a page 8, right? So it's written very clearly, right? So the first line, uh, so like a once free from attachment for the club for the close and aversion for the distance. So the here explanation on the, uh, what do you call the uh, italic form? So that's the explanation. So that the first line symbolized the measure of uh, economity and the, in terms of the full giving, first one, which is the giving of, of fearlessness or the, sometimes it's translated as a giving of protection, okay? Uh, then the next one is, uh, uh, next line is, uh, 
uh, it's in terms of the uh, for immeasurable is the immeasurable of uh, uh, love, right? In terms of the four givings, so uh, 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 like uh, it, this fulfills the two of the commitment of uh, Ratna Sambhava, which is the uh, like uh, he is the one of the five Buddha families, right? So each mentioned earlier, each each one of this, uh, each one of the family has its own specific vows, right? Okay, mm -hmm. and then followed with the next line. So it's a followed with the uh, it's a meaning here. It's a uh, uh, may they be free from the ocean of un unbreakable suffering. That's the meaning. This meaning of this line is the uh, immeasurable compassions, and followed by. The last line of the four immeasurable, may they never be separated from the uh, sacred bliss of liberation. That meaning of this line is the uh, immeasurable of a joy. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, like uh, now, please look at the uh, page nine, the verse A3. So, this verse A3, like uh, uh, the one on the bold, uh, uh, bold uh, fonts, uh, A3, uh, this uh, simple uh, this meaning, uh, meaning of this line is briefly, it's called like a cultivating expression of Bodhicitta. Cultivating expression of Bodhicitta. So, so again, so it's a, I mean, uh, explanation is on the uh, what call, uh, italic font, right? So this is basically like a, I will develop this. Uh, uh, um, here it says like a, I will hold the mind wishing to uh, attain. I will hold the mind wishing to attain complete enlightenment, right? So in order to free all beings from the fear of cyclic existence and the peace. And will not abandon it even at the cost of my life. So it's written quite plain, right? So, so this means I will hold this expressional bodhicitta, okay, uh, even at the cost of my life. Tadi, the karsugore, tadi, nonsim chowa, nonsim sun jeli ya ani, sun sun sim be jeli ya ni intend to do do sim che ko basne, nonsim ke labja na la yoi tik tik ko chotu gores. So this also like uh, here. Uh, this uh, expression of Buddhism, the A3, stanza A3, that also uh, it serves the purpose of uh, one of the commitment here is like, uh, I will generate the uh, expression of Buddhicitta uh, three times a day and three times a night. So reciting this also compensate that vow. Oh. So uh, it's already one. <laughs> so we will uh, pause here, okay? Mm -hmm. La. La. Oh, 
everyone. We have a wonderful potluck back in the dojo. Those who are on Zoom, I am going to close the Zoom room so we have a second part two tape. Please come back in an hour and uh, we'll see you then for part two. Thanks for coming. Yeah, there's lunch in the back, lots of food, lots of great, wonderful food that you all brought. Please, please go enjoy each other, uh, have great conversations.